chairman of the team of examiner, Professor Dr. Hartono Leales, director of Universitas Gajamada Graduate School Open, the opening examination. I am very glad that the examination of Professor Dimaya, Romania, officially open. First of all, I would like to introduce the team of Samanar for the promotion of Professor Dimaya, consists of first Dr. Renik Das Mordea, promoter as member. Second, Professor Dr. Mark Butua, co promoter, sebagai member. Third, Dr. Siti Samsia, to the Sumatin, as member. Fourth, Professor Dr. E.B. Bono Yatmo, assessment team, as member. Five, Dr. Diki Sofian, assessment team, as member. Six, Dr. Sayon Samsurin, examiner team, as member. Seven, Dr. Jenny Bihayani, examiner team, as member. And eight, Dr. Samsung Ali, examiner team, as member. In this occasion, Dr. Jenny Bihayani, as member. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Maninga Smoros Rawadar to introduce the doctorate candidate, please. Thank you, Professor Hattano. I would like to read the curriculum video, the brief curriculum video, Inaya. So, Inaya Romania was born in 1971 and she's a lecturer at the Faculty of Muslim Islamic Thought at the State Islamic University. Uh, for her educational background, she got her BA from the Faculty of Islamic Theology and Philosophy, Usuddin, at the State Islamic University in 1995, and uh, she has two master. The first master was in the Department of Philosophy at the Faculty of Philosophy at the Mada University in 2001. And the second master she got from the Department of Religious Studies, College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Arizona State University. And uh, for the professional experience, she's currently head of the Department of Sociology, of Religion, of Usuddin, uh, Study of Islamic Law, State Islamic University, Sunatar Jada, Jakarta. And not more. The uh, publication she has, the recent publication published in 2013 is The Social Origins of <coughs> Fundamentalism and Its Contextualization in Indonesia in Journal of Germania, uh, published by the Unit Program at State Islamic University of Jakarta. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Linda Smoron. Before we proceed to open examination, I would like to invite Ms. Inaya Romania to present her recitation for 15 minutes, please. Thank you very much for this afternoon. It's my pleasure to have you all here. And I'm going to try to explain um, briefly my basic of my recitation. And uh, the title is uh, a Women's Practice and the Habits of Entertainment. Uh, at the background, uh, the National Society that uh, I created actually is to examine the effect of Arabism on Japanese Muslim women from the 70s until nowadays, and to reduce the causal linkage between Wahhabism, violence, radicalism, and gender based discriminatory practice. Uh, and uh, actually, in my dissertation, I, I try to argue that Wahhabi uh, teachings do not cause radicalism or misogyny. While most radical Muslim follow Wahhabi teachings, there are Wahhabi based organizations that oppose, even oppose religious violence and gender based discrimination. Um, and why I take uh, this, uh, I did my research uh, at this assumption, PBWMI. Uh, uh, because first, it's locations uh, in one of the center of Salafi Baba, according to some reports in Indonesia. And also, it's central regions. It's actually the teaching of Wahhabi, theologically. 
In context, uh, including Indonesia in context, nationalism, and COVID-21 and inflation. And also, it has been mentioned a lot, uh, according to recent report, as a side from this radicalism straight to the rejection of Panama. And also, the next is because it's unique, uh, because the habitus, I mean the habitus, uh, the, the, um, uh, the theory for the whole view, that the happiness of our kid in this percentage actually has become the defining feature of the percentage collective identity uh, of original reasons. The subject of our kid becomes uh, the small part actually of the curriculum, but it's becoming the, the mainstream. It's uh, become a uh, personal narrative uh, of, uh, uh, of the alumni and also the recent uh, students and uh, the, uh, the citizens academia there. And it's not politically radical, and strongly reject violence committed in the name of religion. And it's also in, uh, interesting because it's not affiliated uh, either to Nandarul Ulama, it's not organization or Muhammadiyah. Um, and this is the academic problem why I did the diseases because Wahhabism uh, are commonly in the world in the discussion is associated with violence, intolerance, uh, misogyny and rejection of local culture, advocacy of history, and something like that. But um, this generalization, according to my research, actually are overly simplistic and you ignore data concerning non-violence Wahhabi movements or organizations. Uh, and my analysis actually illustrates that the way it leads to the value of the teaching described in the literature as extremely exclusive can be used with global discussion and performance studies in the development of local culture in the way. And an important implication actually of this analysis is that theology actually, according to my research, is not a silent political variable. And the causes of political religious violence are located elsewhere, but not in this um, you know, theological thing. And this dissertation uh, tried to in, uh, investigate the ways in which Habitus and practice, which is good in Wahhabi understanding of relationship between, uh, in one side, humility and divinity, but in the other side, Indonesian nationalism and Japanese Muslim culture, aid in the construction of non violent individual and collective identity and practice. Uh, okay, and I will skip this objective. Uh, actually, the objective of this presentation is to interrogate the representative of this presenter because according to the last uh, research, this presenter is a sign of radicalism. So, uh, this is actually to interrogate uh, the representation of this presenter as a school of radical theology. And in terms of theoretical uh, discourse, uh, this is actually try to problematize uh, Structuralist in one side and post-structuralist theories on women's identity, construction, and the substances in order to have the sociology of gender and produce a uh, masculine domination that there are strong correlations, if not causal relationship, that being and women, being a woman in religious communities necessarily involves structured uh, discrimination or domination. So this is uh, significant actually to do research on this thing because uh, of some consider that Wahhabism is very dangerous, it's uh, a negative influence on Islam and mothers and something like that. And this research actually clarifies the nature of the relationship between Wahhabism uh, and political orientalism and the practice. And it, it, it demonstrates that Wahhabi teachings and movements are not inherently violent or even political. These teachings do not necessarily lead to enhance the uh, discrimination and system of representation in which misogyny is a symbol and misogyny woman is a symbol of masculine dominance, uh, dominance and power. This is the research question. Actually, the main research question uh, is how women live in a Wahhabi context, strategize and exercise their power, uh, construct their habits and produce practices, and uh, the most subsidiary questions like what are the habits of women concerning the nature of women and their roles, and then how do they construct their practice, and how to dispose the habits on women's sexuality and strategies in public space, and what are the habits actually in the tax, and how uh, textbooks and men, according to the men at the very And the theoretical framework I, I do want to explore in this 
in detail, but in, in general, I use uh, two uh, main theories, uh, board view, um, peer board view and on habits and practice in one side, and Ahari uh, Apupadeo, on the authority and agency. And yes, all are you know, having concern on how agency and structure deal with each other and how agency is constrained by, by the structure. Uh, but they are different for say different background and epistemology. And okay, I just want to like uh, refresh what I have to say briefly that they make this is a generalized scheme. So it's not common ground, but it's a generalized scheme that produce the practice. And it's like systems of disposal. So as in dispose the habitus and then it's uh, produce the practice and practice produce the habitus, something like that. So it's like the past with surprise in the present and that's to perpetuate itself into the future by making itself present in the practice. And agency, um, we move on to the next slide. And agency in the is in the directive of process of structure in people, agents are uh, in various uh, theory in going to achieve to certain disposition and the entire system of skills of perception, appreciation and excellence which constitute habit. So in practice, actually uh, the formula of practice is like this, um, as uh, mentioned uh, on Borges book on distinction, habitus, uh, capital, and then last field, then becoming practice, something like that. And practice is located in space and time, so it's contextual. And um, strategies, strategies uh, are the, because I use the strategies on uh, the title, so strategies are on with this interaction, between this whole system in one side of the habitus and the constraint and the possibilities of parents in the field. And the authority, this is actually coming from Harit uh, Abu uh, mainly in this book, speaking in that's name. Uh, he has uh, two different authorities. Uh, uh, he, men uh, he mentioned it as coercive authority and process authority. Coercive authority is ability to direct the conduct of another person to the use of inducement because of your rector. So you can ask, uh, you know, the teacher, the lecturer to come at certain time or, or to to give the punishment, something like that. And persuasive authority, or uh, persuasive authority is ability to direct a belief or conduct a person because of trust. So I follow you because I trust you, something like that. And agency, individual agency, is sent by and is bound. This is according to Harit Abu which is different from both use concept of agency. Because according to him, that individual agency is standby and is bound to fit fully to execute to uh, the intent of principles. It used to open the collectivity. So in this in this uh, in this sense, uh Hart of Vedal has been focusing very strongly on the, the power of agency. Uh, and okay, findings. So the last things I would like to share is about the findings uh, according to my research force. That the most durable habitus of this Cassandra and alumni and current students are those consuming Taoki. So, if you ask everybody coming from this Cassandra, they will say that the most important thing is Taoki. And the second one is the natural awareness source of sexual temptation and the importance of awareness involvement in public life or space. And uh, in contrast to both this pessimistic theory and the possibility of women in breaking out the masculine domination. I would like to see how these women actually, uh, more particularly in uh, in Kassandra's family, in his family, um, possess symbolic and economic power. So they they are they, they are able to dominate the field. They and, and produce inclusive gender practice, even though they they have this kind of strong target belief, and they engage in process of understanding uh, will of God, or I use a medium book. So they are actually Islamic because they have this ability to interpret the text, to, to understand you know, the, the norm. And uh, some other, uh, you know, some other, uh, some other one actually, they use, um, actually, they use the uh, exclusive power to just trust because they follow the key agreements because they trust. So, uh, they have their authority actually to people that they, they they will give up their power to give it to the kid, you know, or they just you know just don't trust or something like that. But mostly they are if they don't uh, have their this kind of ability to integrate. They believe they give their power to this 
to this Nyai and Kiai. And the habitus of Tawhid, uh, this is the most important, uh, interesting, uh, I think, that the habitus of Tawhid in one sense is compared with that of general equality, you know, in public life, according to this pesantren, and according to the phenomena that I found in this pesantren. And the habitus of women as the source, so in one side, they are, like, like we discussed before, in the public life, they are very active, but the habitus of women as the source of sexual uh, temptation, on the one hand, and the importance of improvement of women in public life, on the other hand, leads women to study just. Okay, it's okay, I'm like the source of the sexual temptation, but what's wrong with me? I can just go, you know, there outside and looking, and, you know, um, uh, do a better life, something like that. So the strategy is the field with symbolic power and the same the veil. So here the veil is also becoming of the strategy for women to become, you know, uh, to have the power and, you know, uh, to, what they call it, right? To be in the field or in the body. So to some degree, the head of the story has become the strategy, of course, because so for them to involve in public life, okay, because we only trust to God, and that, that only God can, you know, decide what we have, we, what we have to do, so, you know, because only that we believe, so we can just, you know, go, go outside and then meet people more, what you call it, like, uh, having good uh, behavior and stuff like that in the name of God. And the subsidiary question, the head of this, uh, sorry, I think this is the wrong thing. Uh, the first one is, uh, number four is with the, the, the first one, that the happiness of the importance of women's involvement in public life provides an opportunity for women to pursue higher education because they think that it's okay, I, I, I close, I, uh, I cover my hair, but I can go to university and then you know, become a doctor or something like that. To a lot of to generate the women economic capital, of course, because I'm a doctor, I'm a lecturer, now I'm, I'm richer, I, I can have economic capital and I can uh, dominate the field because I have the power. Uh, and to just increasing general habits and practice. And um, and women exercise agency and power to either determine, I think I already read it, and have some importance. And I would like to show you the picture. So this is the picture actually in the Sunday in the 60s, how they look like. Uh, you know, and, and they, you know, the happiness is still the same, the topic, but the, the way they clothe, the way they, the strategies because the field to be able to go out is different. And then the next, uh, women's OPT and actually mostly dispose the uh, heritage on the lure of women's sexuality and its dangerous impact on women when in society as well. The happiness of our uh, interestingly, is not related to that of our kid. So in the 60s, uh, like the, the picture that you saw, that's, uh, you know, they said that there is no problem with our own. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's okay. It's, it doesn't mean that you don't offer the our or something like that. So the happiness of our is not related to the, the, the death of our kid. We have our kid, but we have different concept of our own in something like that. Uh, so hand-stacking, segregation, so uh, that was something very popular in the 60s and 70s. And nobody, you know, hesitate to, to have this kind of culture or happiness of practice. And, but uh, since 80s, I think they have this kind of separated from the practice of women. So Taufit is, you know, something like identical with failing or something. And uh, this is the picture. Okay, this is the picture actually in 60s, 70s. Uh, uh, this is actually from the family of the uh, of the Kiai, the, 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 the core, what you call it, the core communities. Uh, and nobody say that they are not Muslim, they are, you know, against Alfie because of their way of uh, looking. Uh, so, I would say that the film becomes again the strategy and bring them to participate in public arena. Well, the habitus of sexual temptation has been durable. This is the problem. In one sense, it's still durable, but the topic is, you know, doesn't uh, what you call that doesn't uh, lead them to just uh, sit down inside the house, but it's all it also uh, encourages them to go outside. 
So the practice illustrates the act of strategizing on the happiness of women, equality, and sexuality. Female students are allowed to be involved, or you know, they are okay to come to the important public sphere, but with a veil to prevent their sexual appeals. Uh, and this is actually that I would like so even they, they drive, um, you know, the women also drive uh, the car, they they, they, they do whatever they, they want they want. With this concept of how it, it is very strong because it's become a global system. Uh, so I would say that the uh, whole new theory of masculine domination, where he said that actually the women's school uh, in the production of practice actually is only to maintain the masculine domination. So it doesn't work to explain this phenomenon because you know the woman here, uh, you know clearly they, they they can like change the history because they they are very happy. they are not dominated except in the ontological, you know because ontologically they still think that they are uh, sexually, what you call it, at the source of sexual depression or something like that. But when it, it comes to public spheres, it comes to like uh, emancipation, actually, they, they, uh, they, they could create the new story. Okay, and at this stage, I would like to show you the pictures, more pictures, how they look like. So, they theoretically want to because they are a um, factor machine. But look at what they are doing. They can, you know, even the women becoming a teacher for male and female students. And also the students, uh, next. The students also, they have, uh, you know, this kind of activities outside, together with the male. And even they have, like, matching men and something like that, which is according to Saudi uh, Wahhabi, something impossible. That's why I would like to say that this is contextual Wahhabi. Because it's, uh, you know, different. And they're also on the stage singing together. They are having these situations, men and women, so they have the same access to education. Uh, and they, they took picture happily together. Um, you know, and this is an answer questions that the future reaction simply that can be the next of uh, the next research. What's this question? Maybe ask whether their epistemological models and theorization more adequately, I mean, there, uh, back to Bourdieu and Halit Abu uh, could be used to explain the happiness of Indonesia and progressive Muslim because they may, you know, include to what we call um, radicalism too, or even, you know, violence, I don't understand, I, I don't really, I'm not sure, but it could be if you use this kind of, you know, uh, theoretical framework. And there is no reason to think that this reason applies only to Indonesian women's habits and practice. And actually, it would be interesting to follow up this, to study to see if the so called cross progressive Muslim, as well as feminists, might be included for discrimination. And the research may be important to analyze how assertive and powerful women you know, are often are accused of uh, using sexual magic, sexual power, actually. And how did the discrimination of work you this are the just uh, thing uh, we remember about uh, the, the, the story of girl walking and something like that, how the government used them as the, the symbol of uh, you know resistance from the power of women and sexuality and something like that. So how do we explain the persistent burden of the discourse of sexuality, power and danger? And the need to contain women to avoid social and religious disasters. And the domestication of women is also a central element of new order. So I think it's also very interesting to see how this, this kind of things happen. Uh, is the new order discourse about communism similar to the, phenomen the fundamentalist discourse about the veil, about, uh, about the West also, about you know, freedom of sex or something like that? Is still Bandisasi structurally analog to new order policy on the continent of women? Something like that. So I think it's also interesting to see uh, more, more people using this two uh, theoretical framework because in one side, Bodhi is kind of pessimistic and Halit Abuwadu is very, very optimistic. And this to some extent is also difficult to mention that agency is so powerful, so good agency, uh, you know, change the stuff. So, okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Inaya. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. Martinez Mora from London to push and uh, question and argue the theory and give framework, please. Thank you, Professor Adano. And first of all, I, I would like to uh, congratulate uh, 
uh, Naya for being in this stage, the last stage, and I think a lot of people can be here looking forward for this. So, uh, a little uh, congratulation. My first question is that you use the social practice theory concept uh, introduced by Peter Boudou, and in this case, you try to look at how the social practice uh, related here, or, or you try to place this habitus uh, in the social practice um, in the in the context of Indonesia, in the context of Japanese, and in the context of Sangai. But in your title, you, you mentioned about human uh, women practice. So what do you mean by this? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Um, Dr. Uh, who assist me and, and, and always encourage me until 70 years. <laughs> well, well, yeah, uh, actually, even though I, uh, I was talking about the practice in uh, general, um, general views, but actually, uh, I focused my research on women's issues. Let's say I was, uh, I was uh, seeing, I was looking at how these women actually in these communities in the Sunday actually produce their practice, but they have this kind of uh, habitus that was constructed by male, it's male dominated habitus, but how they finally strategize this habitus and then produce um, practice which is, you know, to some extent is inclusive in the practice. Because, you know, they, uh, they say that, okay, because I'm also, you know, um, I'm also uh, in front of God have the same status as you because of the profit, so that's mean that I also have power to go outside and then, you know, uh, to be with uh, the community uh, to make a better life for together for all the community. So actually that's my purpose. So I, I was talking about prevail, I was talking about sexuality, I was talking about uh, the value of women as the, the source of this kind of the construction of heritage. Okay.